This was a case of something that was a gleam in our eye for a long time. And we recognize that when you look at a switch mode amplifier, you've incurred a lot of overhead from things that you have to do that you wouldn't have had to do if you weren't switch mode. One of the big areas of cost overhead is forming a high performance modulator. Well, we learned how to do it. That was part of the world of getting between making the gradient fast tracking power supply and making the K2, the opposed current converter. We learned how to do that. But kid you not, uh, if you tried to put that in a little amplifier, it wouldn't make financial sense because you'd have the same burden, the same overhead to make that modulator no, no matter how big the amplifier is, it follows it. So we're looking at that and we recognize that there is a world out there that can solve that problem. And it's a world of, of mixed signal integrated circuits. So there's technology out there that we didn't have access to because of cost. The development cost to make something like that needs deep pockets. This is where Harman came in. So we were working with other parts of Harman, Harman Becker Automotive Systems, and talking about, okay, how's about making chips that can support your high-end automotive things that go in Lexus and stuff like that. And there, <clears throat> we can start, and we can talk in numbers now, where we can talk to a capable supplier. And we identified quite early on that the supplier they had the most to offer in terms of their willingness to do mixed signal custom ASICs, their technology and their fabs, the, the ability to actually make the devices that we needed inside, and the fact that they had a vested interest in making PWM audio, okay? So they wanted to learn from us what we're doing at the same time we're designing chips for us exclusively, okay, that Harman Becker can fund the development of it. So that began with collaboration within Harman. We had people in Germany in particular, and the chief technology officer at that time was in Germany. He's since retired. And other engineers over there, most of which are still around somewhere, okay? And here, putting all our heads together in their wallet, okay? And coming up with a set of chips that would meet both parties' demands. And while we're at it, we're talking to others that make home audio and the like. And you know, if they're interested, they can hop on board. We're listening to them. You know, what is it that they need? So we're designing basically chips, trying to meet different markets all at once. But the good news is, if you draw your boundaries in the right places, that's doable. We actually produce chips large enough in the emerald chips that our smallest products can use them outright making those products cost effective where they would not have been cost effective at all without using power ICs. So it takes basically you know, recognizing you know, how to cut down these overhead costs that go into switch mode. Other areas that you know, we've been interested in is magnetics, which is you know, an unfinished journey, you know, is how to take money out of the output filter. Okay? it's possible. But it's not as straightforward in some ways as the more difficult journey of making those complex ICs. And Ruby is one that is designed for interleave systems. You don't have to use it with interleave. You can go with an interleave factor of one and we make those products too. A class D is using it as a front end. They make stuff that you know you sell in Guitar Center and things like that cost effective. 